when we talk about digital disruption, we have to be very careful about language and understanding what it means. So this is what I'd like to share with you. We are in the middle, as you know, of the fourth industrial revolution, according to the World Economic Forum. And the fourth industrial revolution is very different from the first and the second and the third, which was driven by steam and electricity and the internet respectively. It is different because in this case, one technology, digital technology, is eating every other technology. So digital technology is eating mechanical technology through the internet of things. It is eating medical technology through genomes and you know, chips in the rats' brains. It is eating social technology because of WeChat and Facebook, right? And so when people talk about digital disruption, the definition of digital disruption, which I would offer you, is that digital disruption is no different than the fourth industrial revolution, right? And therefore, digital transformation, you don't need 100 answers from 100 CEOs. The answer is very simple. Digital transformation is the rewiring of your companies, of your people, and your society from the third industrial revolution to the fourth industrial revolution. When you go talk to IT companies and many other companies, they will often say, hey, you have to do digital transformation. You have to use artificial intelligence. You have to use my technology. You have to go to the cloud. All of that is incorrect. Digital transformation is not a technology. Digital transformation is not a project. Digital transformation is not a strategy. Digital transformation is surviving and thriving in the next industrial revolution by rewiring yourself, right? And that is much bigger than any project or any technology. And I realized that at Procter & Gamble about five years ago, because as I was saying, I had the privilege of, you know, uh, being in charge of this IT and global business services organization, which was considered to be, um, you know, some of the best in class in the world, but you always have a lot of opportunities. And I knew that we had opportunities. So that's why I went out and talked to 100 CEOs. And one of them was the CEO of this small startup called um, uh, Wanolo. And um, you can see the email exchange between me and the CEO of uh, the company Wanolo. His name is AJ Brustein. And we were going back and forth trying to set up a time to meet. On April 10th, I said, you know, I'm not available this week. And he said, fine, you know, I will ask uh, my admin to set up a meeting, and then his admin at the bottom, you know, sent out an email saying, here are all of the dates. And this sounds like a very boring story, except that when you click on the address of the admin, left-hand side at the bottom, you find out Amy Ingram, the admin assistant, is a robot. I had no idea that we had been emailing with a robot. If you read that email, there is no way other than the signature to tell. When I say on April 10th, I'm out next week, none of the options that Amy offered was in that area of conflicting time. Then you look at the date, 2015, this was five years ago. And then you ask yourself, which is a really important human job? And one of the most important you know, jobs for a person is the assistant of the CEO of a company. And yet you have this example where this small startup was already using a robot to do some of the work of the admin assistant of the CEO. The lesson I learned from this is that in big organizations, in large companies, we always ask the wrong questions. We keep asking, is technology ready for me to do digital transformation? And that is the wrong question. It is not technology's job to be ready for you. Technology will never be ready for you. It is your job to figure out which specific use cases are already ready. So technology may, it may take a long time for technology to completely replace an admin assistant, but the calendaring function of the admin assistant was already ready five years ago and these startups were already using it. And that's the reason why the startup internal business cost structure 
as a percent of their sales is 50% better than that in large companies. That is our real competition, not another large company. It is the startups. Thank you, Tony, for that wonderful presentation. It, it was very interesting to hear about how things have been accelerated uh, due to the pandemic. And there are issues like, you know, everybody's now working from home and um, people are talking about should everybody be all working from home now? And you mention all these things that will change with digital transformation. It's all related in a certain way. What do you think? will be the role of humans in this digitally transformed world? And what do you think in particular about working from home? Um, so uh, let me take the first part of your question. You know, what's the role of humans um, in this digital world? Um, this is one of the reasons why I like to uh, put digital transformation in the context of industrial revolution. Because for me, digital transformation and, and digital is just another technology. You know, just like steam was a technology, just like electricity was a technology. And, you know, in 1950, scientists said, hey, if we continue to automate so much by, you know, in 20 years, people will only have to work three days a week. Well, you know, now it is about, you know, 50, 60 years later, and I can tell you, we are working harder than people did in 1950. So there will always be a role for humans and you know, there will always be a role for technology to help the humans, right? Um, so I personally don't buy the argument that you know, this is going to be hurtful to work. However, I think that's a different question than displacement. You know, we used to have people that used to go on the streets and light the lamps. Those jobs are gone, but they have been replaced by you know, programmers and others. So there's going to be a displacement of jobs but that's not the same as having no jobs. Yeah? Um, work from home, I think, is absolutely here to stay. I mean, I think the world has been through a great learning over the last six months on how to make work from home work. Um, when I was based in Asia, in Singapore in um, uh, 2012, um, I, I experimented with having the entire organization there that used to work for me to work at least three days a week from home. And we made a lot of mistakes. I think we forced people to work from home. Uh, in other cases, they wanted to come to the office but could not. I think we have now learned that there are some rules that it is better to do face-to-face, -face, you know, creative work, um, you know, face-to-face -face negotiations, all that kind of stuff has to be face-to-face. We have also learned though that most other work can be done anywhere remotely. And so I think we will arrive at the right balance of what type of work to do remotely and what type of work we have to go to the office for. The World Knowledge Forum.